welcome and welcome back to All Things Academic with Erica, aka Professor Lloyd. On this channel, we talk about academic lifestyle and planning for passion and productivity. You may have noticed that I'm sitting in a new location among my plants in my favorite chair, which is great because in this video, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite topics to talk about, which is the academic job market. The academic job market, in my mind, can often feel like the Hunger Games. Literally, when I was on the job market, we would put our signs up for our friends and say, may the odds ever be in your favor. As you go on the job market to try to find a tenure track job, it might feel like survival of the fittest. It might feel like the last academic standing. All of those analogies would fit the academic job market. And whether you are excited about going on the job market or afraid, going on the job market for the first time in the fall or you've been on the job market for several years i hope that i can share some information in this video that will help you as you prepare for the academic job market in the fall so here in the u.s job announcements are starting to come out they will continue to pick up in momentum and there will be more positions announced in the early fall with application materials being due anywhere from august september october november december with interviews being scheduled in the fall and in the early spring for most tenure track jobs. So first you wanna start with what types of positions you're looking for. Whether you're looking for a postdoc position, which I already made a video about and I won't talk about in this video, or whether you're applying for a tenure track job, you wanna start with what type of position you're looking for. My number one piece of advice that I share with everyone on the job market is to start early. Don't wait until the end. Don't wait until those materials are finished. So you might be inclined to wanna wait until the announcements come out, but you wanna have some type of skeleton or draft or boilerplate of your materials that you can prepare this summer before the announcements really start to come out. And you wanna to start to prepare your research statement, your teaching statement, which can also be a teaching and mentoring statement or a teaching and advising statement. Some universities are now asking for diversity statements, what sample publications you might submit. You really wanna start early in compiling those materials. And once you have your, a draft of your materials prepared, try to get as many eyes on those materials as possible. So when I was a student, when I was a postdoc going on the job market, applying for tenure track jobs, I had anyone and everyone that would read my materials, my mentors, my PhD advisor, I had them read a draft of my materials, give me feedback, and then I revised my materials. And one thing that's great about getting feedback on your materials if you can, is that people who are reading the materials can give you feedback and they have also sat on searches so they know what these materials look like. You can also ask your colleagues or your friends for examples of their statements. Oftentimes graduate students will reach out to me and ask for copies of my job materials and I'm happy to share copies of my research, teaching, and diversity statements with them just so that they can see what an example looks like. So if possible, try to get examples of those materials. You also want to update your CV. So the summer before the big rush of the academic job market is a really great time to update your curriculum vita and make sure you have all of the relevant experience, information, your publications, any grants that you've submitted, all of your service work listed on your CV, even before it's required to submit for job materials. So summer before the job market is a great time to brush up those materials and get them ready to go out the door. As you're starting early and thinking about submitting your materials, you also want to alert your letter writers. So even though you might not be applying for jobs for several months, first you want to think about who are the people that you're going to request to write letters of recommendation for you, and you might give them a heads up. Hey, in a few months, I will be applying for jobs and I was wondering if you would be available to write a strong letter of recommendation. What's great about giving your letter writers a heads up is that they can start to prepare their letters or if they haven't written for you before, you've given them several months notice before you actually need to submit a letter. So they can either start to write a draft or they can wait until you let them know, hey, my materials are due in a few weeks. You've let them know with as much notice as possible. And I really like getting as much advance notice as possible so that I can build in people's requests into my schedule if possible. So alert your letter writers as soon as possible. Another thing that you might think about this summer as you're getting ready for the job market is to prepare a draft cover letter. Of course, you wanna customize your cover letter for each position 
but you could at least write a draft of your cover letter so that you have a boilerplate that includes your introduction, expressing your interest and why this is a great fit, why this position is a great fit for you, a little bit about your experience and what's included in your packet. So you might say, enclosed, you'll find a copy of my research, teaching and diversity statements. Letters of recommendation are forthcoming from the following individuals. So you can write a boilerplate cover letter even before the announcements for jobs come out. So I often keep a master copy of my materials and then I customize them for each announcement that comes out. Another thing that you wanna do as you're getting ready to go on the job market, and this is something that I did that was incredibly helpful, is to create a tracking sheet. I create my tracking sheets in um, Google Sheets or Excel. You can use any type of documentation system that works for you but I like to keep track in a spreadsheet of the university, the announcement, just a general blurb about the position, when the deadline is, and if I've submitted the application or not. So because you might be applying for several positions and you'll be managing several deadlines and each job will require different pieces of information, it's helpful to create a tracking sheet so that you know what positions, when the deadlines are, and what materials are required how many letters are required, for example. It's helpful to have all of that information in one place so that you can track the positions once you start moving through the process. Another thing that you wanna think about is to know the deadlines. Jobs will have their deadlines as early as August all the way through January, some maybe even later in the year, depending on their fiscal cycle or when they got their announcements approved or when the search committee is able to meet. But a general timeline for when these positions, when the applications are due is generally August through January. So you wanna keep in mind that fall is gonna be a really busy time for applications in terms of deadlines and in terms of being invited for interviews. Another piece of advice for getting ready for the job market, and this may, depending on your situation, this may or may not work. My advice to folks on the academic job market is to cast a wide net if you can. And the reason why I say cast a wide net geographically, because if you are geographically bound, there are fewer positions, which decreases your probability of getting one of those positions. So a um, job might get anywhere from 100 to 200 applications and they're trying to fill one position. But if you could apply for more positions, that just increases your probability of securing a tenure track job, unfortunately. So that's kind of the way that these jobs work. So if you are able to cast a wide net for any position that's reasonable, my recommendation is not to apply for jobs in places where you absolutely would not want to move to or where you um, universities where you absolutely would not like to be at, but if possible, cast as wide a net as possible because it just increases your probability of successfully getting a tenure track job. Another piece of advice is to do your research, especially for positions that are highly desirable that you really want. I've had mentees ask me in the past, you know, oh, the job market is so difficult. There's so many jobs to apply for. How can I put together these like customized materials for all of these jobs? Hypothetically, someone could apply for 60 jobs in any given year, and that is quite time consuming. And so I've had mentees ask me, do I need to write customized materials for all of these different jobs? And I would say customized materials that demonstrate your fit and that you know a bit about that institution, that you know a bit about that department, that you've already started looking at what centers, what resources, what classes you might teach, and you talk about that in your cover letter, in your research statement, maybe in your teaching statement, maybe in your diversity statement, if you can establish fit in those materials, that will um, increase your probability of being invited for an interview. So among your application is more likely to stand out among the um, potentially hundreds of applications that one position might get. So I do say if there are positions that you really want, that you're really excited about, and maybe they're a perfect fit, those materials, you do want to make sure that you customize them to really emphasize fit. If there are other positions that you're not really quite sure about, if you're limited for time, then I would say, you know, <laughs> maybe you don't customize uh, materials for 60 applications. But that's really up to personal preference and how, you know, how much you want to work to establish fit for that position. My next piece of advice is to submit to conferences. So in my field, we've already seen, I've already started to see the calls for research for major conferences in my area. 
And if I was a student that was about to go on the job market, or if I was a, a faculty member or a postdoc about to go on the market, I would definitely make sure that I submitted to those major conferences for two reasons. The first reason is you want to continue to establish yourself as an expert in a field, which includes presenting at the major conferences in your area. So what I would say is for people that are closer to the end of their program, maybe their fifth, fourth or fifth or sixth year, as you're getting closer to the end of your program, try to present at those high profile conferences in your area because it establishes you as an expert in a particular discipline. It also gives you visibility to people in your area. The second reason that you may or may not know about is that um, some departments use the major conference as a preliminary interview. So when I was on the job market, there was a department that reached out to me and said, we'd like to interview in our round one of applications. And we were wondering if you were gonna be at XYZ major conference, we would like to meet with you to do a preliminary interview. So you wanna be at that conference if it's in your area, if it's a major conference in your area. So there are two reasons that are beneficial to present at the major conferences in your discipline, including to increase your visibility so that when your application comes across people's desks, they've already seen you present at the major conferences, they kind of already know what your research is about. And then the second reason is that some of these conferences are actually used as preliminary interviews. One thing that you also want to do as you're preparing your materials is write maybe a practice job talk. Write your job talk even before you get interviews because it's good to have a boilerplate or a draft of your job talk that you can pare back, that you can modify, that you can add in additional information, but it's just good to have it already prepared so that in the fall when you're super busy with these searches, when you're super busy with interviews and you know the preliminary interviews, the Zoom interviews, the on-campus interviews, that you're just modifying at that point and you're not trying to construct brand new um, information and materials. And then finally, depending on how many jobs you apply for, you really wanna think about the academic job market as a full-time job, unfortunately, because it's so time consuming. From the preparing of your materials, um, preparing, submitting your materials, preparing your job talk, being invited for interviews, actually being physically at the interviews. And I'll do a whole other video about preparing for interviews as we get closer to interview season. But all of that process, and then once you get offers, negotiating those offers, that in and of itself can feel like a full-time job. So just be prepared for if you're going on the job market this fall, to make sure that you carve out that time or that you're aware of the time commitment that it's gonna to take to apply for several positions. So I hope that I said something valuable. I hope that I said something of value in this video. If you like this type of content, if you like talking about academic topics, give this video a like, subscribe, and share. Share your tips for the academic job market or share your questions in the comments below because I love talking about the job market. And my goal for um, doing these types of videos and my goal for meeting with people and mentoring them about and coaching people about the academic job market is to help them become successful in getting jobs. So I love people to get jobs. <laughs> people getting jobs makes me so happy and navigating the academic job market, which as I said, can feel like the Hunger Games or just this incredibly evaluative, stressful, horrible process that you may go on for several years. I love to hear good news about people securing these positions. So I hope I said something of value. Like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.